Hey guys, so this is my Veiled Chameleon care sheet video, and I'm just going to touch the basics such as feeding, watering, housing, supplementation, just the essentials that you need to know for your chameleons. Um, they are not beginner pets, no matter what kind it is, whether it's a panther or a Veiled Chameleon. There are some people that have had success as beginners with Veiled Chameleons, but Sometimes there are people that are ignorant and just don't research anything like, oh, this is a cool pet, and they don't know anything about it. So, I'm just going to run through, like, everything your chameleon needs. As far as housing goes, you want a tall screen or mesh cage. You want it to be twice the length of your chameleon, and you got to think about how big the chameleon will be as an adult. They like taller enclosures as opposed to wider enclosures, and you want to provide plenty of things for them to climb on, like vines or trees or, you know, just plants in general. You can use live plants, you can use fake plants, just make sure that there's some greenery in there for them to hide in, plenty of branches for them to climb on. Um, do not use glass aquariums. Glass aquariums are bad for chameleons. They're too wide, they don't provide enough airflow, and it's just not good for your chameleon. And they're expensive, not to mention, so I just don't recommend it altogether. <coughs> for substrate, I recommend paper towels or newspaper or something like that because they can eat substrate whenever they're eating because they strike at their prey, and it can cause them to become impacted. So no eco-earth, no reptobark, no sand, especially no sand. Um, if you've got a female gravid chameleon, I would put a separate tub in her enclosure that's got some topsoil or something like that in it so she can lay her eggs comfortably. <laughs> Food. I get a lot of questions about what I feed my chameleon. I feed him a lot of roaches, crickets, some silkworms, superworms, waxworms, just Anything that is acceptable for them to eat, you can check online and see what is acceptable for your chameleon to eat. Those are just the items that I use, and veiled chameleons will eat vegetation like romaine lettuce, um, ficus, hibiscus, and a couple others I can't remember right now. So just check online and see what is acceptable to feed your chameleon. Everyone is different, so some will eat vegetation, some won't, but it's just... It's different for every single veiled chameleon. <laughs> Supplementing. You want to supplement with a calcium that's got no D3 every single day of the week if you have a veiled chameleon. Check with other sources if you've got a different chameleon for supplementation, but for veiled chameleons, every single day with a calcium supplement that does not have D3. Once a month you should supplement with a multivitamin and a D3 supplement. So. Just make sure that you've got a calendar and you can keep track of when you're supplementing them because too much D3 is toxic to them and it can cause their uh, muscles to calcify and they get tremors from it. So it's just not good and it can kill them in the long run. So good UVB exposure, no calcium D3 because their body can synthesize calcium er, D3 from UVB exposure and sunlight. <laughs> Heat should be between the 70s and the 90s. Nighttime temperature drop should be around 70 degrees, and a basking spot should be around 90 degrees. They can't have any lights on whatsoever at night because they have a difficult time sleeping, and mine's been fussy sometimes because I've failed to turn off his light, and, you know, they're just not happy when that happens. Sorry if I'm coughing a lot. I think I'm getting a cold. Um... You can use ceramic heat emitters at night if your house gets below uh, 70 degrees just to keep them a nice ambient temperature. They don't emit any light, but you want to make sure that it hasn't gone out after you've turned it on, so it should be fairly warm, but don't actually touch it, and it melts plastic. So don't touch it with plastic, don't touch it with your hand, just, you know, put your hand like maybe this far away from it and feel if it's radiating heat. Humidity should be relatively high because some of them are from more tropical zones, some of them are from areas of Africa, so just check and see what the humidity requirements are. For veiled chameleons, it's 50 to 70 percent, so that's a good range for veiled chameleons. I know each chameleon is different, which is why I'm referring to my chameleon. 
as opposed to every single kind of chameleon because I have not researched other kinds of chameleons except for the ones that I own. <laughs> chameleons don't recognize standing water. You need to spray their enclosure and install a dripper system. And you can also hand water them with like a little dripper or a syringe, like those little water drippers. <laughs> But make sure to slowly drip it into their mouth and don't drown your chameleon because I've seen so many videos on here where people have a glass and they're just pouring it into their chameleon's mouth. That's too much for once. Their mouth can only hold so much at one time. Um, and I think I've pretty much covered everything. I keep looking over at this paper if you guys are wondering because I don't want to miss anything and make sure that I can tell you guys as much information as possible. And make sure that you do your research online, get a good book, and, you know, make sure that your chameleon is going to have everything that it needs. And if you cannot provide everything that it needs, do not get a chameleon. I've seen so many people get them and not know what they're doing and not providing them with the proper enclosures. And that's just not what you want to do. So make sure you can provide everything that your animal needs and happy chameleon keeping.